<laughs> okay. Uh, hello, everyone <laughs> who's joined us. Um, I have Lyndon here. Before I introduce him, uh, just take a moment to share it if you want to, guys, if you think it's going to help other people. Let them know um, on your messenger, on Telegram, whatever else you can, uh, you know, send it to, to them. Um, also know that I am going to upload uh, this interview later on on my Rumble channel. Um, the Rumble, if you don't know, it's an alternative to YouTube and they don't censor the videos. They don't take them down. So YouTube probably will take it down. I don't know yet, but it's getting worse and worse. Um, I don't know what Facebook will do, but it will be on Rumble. The link is in the description below with all the other links as well to check out later. Um, so, yeah. So we're going to get right into it. Um, this is Lyndon. He's one of the – what are you – Chancellor? Is that what he was, you are, a Chancellor? The CEO of uh, BEEP. Uh, Beep, one, yes. In, um, in Common Law Court. Yes. I'm a, a commissioner for Common Law Court. Commissioner. Uh, That's right, yeah. Uh, I'm one of their very few uh, diplomats as well for my sins. Awesome. We're going to ex explain that a little bit as well, uh, why the need for that. Um, but, yeah, uh, thank you for willing to sit down with me and uh, just mm -hmm. for me to just bombard you with questions <laughs> about the being a constable under common law. Um, and so we just jump right into it. And, guys, I want you to know that if you have questions, for Lyndon, uh, that's going to help you. We want to help you. There's no, uh, you know, silly question. There is, if it's a question for you and it matters to you, then it matters. Put it down. And if it's going to be a beneficial to this interview, uh, if it's not a personal matter, but something that's going to be a beneficial uh, for everybody to understand and uh, it's a quick answer, or whatever, uh, just put it down. And if I, if, if it's something that I think is it's useful to ask now. Um, I will. I'll ask Lyndon right now as we go through the interview, okay? So um, we're just going to go with the flow. We'll try to get as much as we can in uh, done with these questions and then just close it off. And, uh, yeah, okay. So I'll ask you straight away, all right, we'll get right into it, Lyndon. Um, what, why do we need constables under common law? Why, what's the difference? Why, we already have police officers. Mm -hmm. You know, and so why, why would we need it? Is that a, a generic to Cyprus question or a generic to the world question, Andrew? Both. Both. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, it depends on which country you're talking about, but most okay. most uh, police forces, if we look at the United Kingdom and Cyprus, they're yeah. run by the governments as corporations and they're they're more enforcement officers now of uh, government policy. They're supposed to be there as constables to protect the people, stop a breach of the peace, and make sure nobody is suffering any harm, loss, or injury as a result of that, of, of just living their lives peacefully. Now, we all know that's not the case now, and the police, the statutory police, have become enforcement officers. Um, and now they're incredibly corrupt as well. I'm sure you know that. And I've had dealings with that in Cyprus and uh, a common law constabulary is an absolute necessity for us as a community today. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so can you give some uh, example of uh, where the police, just for the people that don't know anything about this, they think that this is uh, the only thing that exists is the system that we've been under. Sure. So just, just to tell everybody, Guys, the system that we've been under is not the system. We're not, I'm talking about Western cultures. We're talking about America, you know, Australia, mm -hmm. England, you know, all, all nations that we know of, France, even Italy, all that. Um, yeah. We've been under this uh, this system with their police and everything. That's not the system. That uh, it, it basically we got kind of taken over. We it faded away the proper law system that was meant to be governing us, um, and that system now that it's taken over has their own police force and um, it, it breaches what is really lawful and really is a very oppressive and controlling system um, mm -hmm. and they, they have their own police force. So can you give an example like uh, under common law, which is the, the proper law of the land that we're meant to be actually have, but it's not right now. Mm -hmm. um, you're basically, with through common law court, it's basically trying to raise up that system back again, right? Is that what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. and and so I've seen uh, just to give a background, I've seen that you guys have taken initiative uh, compared to other places I've looked. You've taken initiative to have 
um, your own currency um, for uh, uh, under common law, um, constables under common law, passports so you can travel under common law, um, and it just goes on and on and on, right? So basically, there's such a great, great vision to get to create to build back the system that was stolen, that was taken away, that was hijacked, uh, yep. and so it even has schools. Hospitals under common law, restaurants can run under common law, businesses can run under common law. So when these guys, when this government that that comes under the maritime law, the law that's statutory, mm -hmm. um, tries to enforce people to take the vaccine so they can go to work or need the vaccine or need anything else to go to eat at a restaurant, those mm -hmm. restaurants that are under common law don't have to submit to such a silly uh law or legal thing right that's right yeah well we just we, we, we've just been subject to a two-year global takeover yeah so um and and that's absolutely obvious to people that are awake to that yeah. and, and people that love freedom so now more than ever we, now more than ever we need what we're doing here so yeah. this is what this is why i i went on my own personal journey and i discovered common law court as as the you know head and shoulders the vehicle to actually put freedom back for people. It's, it's not just the, the law. So when, when you actually understand common law and you understand where the common law court is coming from, you realize that the statutory police will just drive a bus over your head. If you're running a cafe in Cyprus and you're standing under common law, the statutory police won't care two hoots about you and what you say, I'm a living man and, and things like that. They'll just, they'll just drive a bus over your head and they'll arrest you. And, and drag you away. Now it's an entirely different story if uh, if two or three statutory police officers turn up at your cafe and try and shut you down, or or whatever they're trying to do, and three times the amount of people wearing this badge turn up, the common law court constables, and they say to the statutory police, "How can we help you? How can we assist you?" Right, yeah. <laughs> which, which is coded speak for "Go away and leave the living men and women alone." Right. Okay. So, that, that, that's all they understand. The, you know, the, the police today uh, know much, not much different to what I call the mafia because they're just there being paid to intimidate people on behalf of the government. Okay, but is it Go is on. it legal though? Like, if let's say, let's play that scenario out. Hmm. There's a cafe in Cyprus or in the UK or any of the other nations of Australia that chooses to open up anyway because they're saying we're under common law, but they come and get bullied by the statutory police that's under this government uh, and under this legal system. Yeah. But then we call the constables from common law and they come and surround as well peacefully and say, listen, mate, these guys are uh, under common law. Your mm. law does not apply on, on here. No, um, is, is that legal? Would, would, it, would we get yeah. arrested and thrown into prison? You okay. know, what would happen? There's a big difference between legal and lawful. Yeah. Okay. Lawful is, is the law of the land, law of people, okay, which is the, the law that we all were born with, the, 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 the law that we understand, right? We understand that we're not supposed to hurt each other and, and, and steal things from each other and injure each other. That is the law, okay? And we also understand inherently that we're free, yeah. okay? So when somebody, and, and governments and, and their police forces, the government is there put there by the people, and it is the people that have the power over the government, not the other way around. So a lot of people, and, and, but the government would like to uh, subvert that and have you think otherwise. And they would actually teach their police forces to think otherwise, that they're there to enforce what the government say. But superior to the government, superior to the statutory police are the people, we the people, are superior to the government and superior to the statutory police. In all civilised societies, that's the case. So what they've done hundreds and hundreds of years ago is when we first started um, finding that we could sail from the United Kingdom to Cyprus, we actually had to do it on boats. So we actually, when we're on the boats, we weren't on your land or my land, so we, we invented law of the sea, which is maritime law, uh, and that's the basis of all commercial law. And the people behind this that wanted to control whole countries and groups of people thought that this maritime law was quite handy. And so what they did is they started to 
convince the people on the land of Cyprus and the land of United Kingdom that the law of the sea was um, superior to the law of the land, which has never been the case. And they tricked the world into thinking that maritime law, which is legal law, and it's, it's got its own language called legalese. Yeah. And, and that's where the word legal comes from. It's, it's legalese and and lawful. Lawful is you and me, Andrew, the law of the land. You know, I will not cause you any harm, loss or injury. And if we enter into a contract with each other, I'm going to be honourable to that contract. And so will you. That's yeah. common. Law. That is lawful. OK, yeah. it's not lawful to kill me. It's not lawful to hurt me. Right? Yeah. But when you talk about legal, is it legal to keep the cafe open? OK, under their legislation, their legally, no, it's not legal to keep the cafe open, but it is lawful to keep the yeah. cafe open as long as no harm, loss or injury is being created. So they yeah. can say, oh, yeah, you're killing us by spreading this disease. And you say, OK, we've got to prove that. And if you can't prove it, right, come back to me with, with hard evidence that this thing yeah. exists. And then I will I will agree as a living man or woman to go along with what you're saying. I'm a reasonable yeah. man, I'll accept you. But if you can't prove it, you can't stop me from putting food on the table for my family. Thank you very much. Yeah. So the answer to your question, is it legal? Is is technically no, it's not. But the the statutory police that come to enforce that um, that wrongful uh, law and it's not a law it's, a, it's it's an instruction but when they come to enforce it the trouble is they think the statutory police think they've got the authority and they yes. simply haven't but yes they could uh, slap handcuffs on you yes they could bully and intimidate you which is why we need the constables okay and constables can be recruited from any 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 one of us you know you don't have to be six foot four and and, and, you know, 200 pounds of bone and muscle to be a constable. Yeah. Uh, the, the best constables I've found are, are mature women because they, 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 they wag their finger at, at, at the statutory police and, uh, and they don't like that somehow, you know. <laughs> yeah. And they yeah. and tell them what they're doing wrong. You know? But most of the police officers, really, they're never told about common law, right? So they're actually ignorant of this. So when we would come up and say, or a, a trained constable under common law would say, this, what you're doing does not uh, apply here at this cafe or at this school or uh, for this uh, living man or woman, they don't know. They'll actually respond and react and defend themselves and think that they're, you're wrong, they're right, correct? Because they're actually mistrained. Yeah. Uh, and they, yeah, they don't even know. Many of the lingo they'll say when they say, do you understand? And things like this. They will say the spill that they were taught to say, but they don't even realize that actually it's based on Black's Law Dictionary, the legalese language that will catch someone into a contract without yeah. them realizing it very deceptively. But they don't even know because they're themselves being deceived. They don't know that, what they're doing. The statutory police are just trained as, as, as young recruits. Yeah. Trained that when, when you're thinking of arresting somebody, apprehending somebody or dealing with them, whatever they want to do, they're trained to you must get the name. They don't ask why, yeah, yeah. you just, just get the name. But the moment they've got the name, then you're entering into a contract with them. And, yes, and yes. as a living man or woman, you don't do that at all. You just say, no, I, I don't wish to do any business with you. Thank you. I had it today but with, yeah. with, I was trying to stop a bailiff doing something really bad. And um, and then we got the police involved, the statutory police. And the statutory police were there. And, um, and they were nice, but they, they hadn't got a clue. They didn't know what common law court was. They didn't know what common law constable was. I got my, my, my warrant card out and I showed them. I said, I'm a constable for the common law court. Um, I'm also a diplomat for the common law court. And, um, and today I'm going to talk to you about that and what, what is in front. So you as a, um, you know, I've got powers of arrest as, as a constable. Uh, but my, the difference between my power of arrest and your power of arrest is that I have to be absolutely certain the crime's going ahead before I can arrest. Um, but you as a statutory police, you have to only suspect something's happening. But what's happened here is the bailiff is trying to issue uh, a warrant that I, I know is a fraudulent warrant. It comes from a court that is, is, um, has no judge. And there is no judge's signature on the warrant. 
So therefore, these bailiffs are acting under fraud. Fraud is a crime, and they're trying to seize goods. So if yeah. they're committing a fraud, and then they're trying to seize goods, that is be another crime of theft. So two crimes are happening here. So these bailiffs here are criminals. And the bailiffs were getting very agitated <laughs> every time I called them criminals. They said, you're making this personal. I said, no, we're not. I'm just stating the truth. You are a criminal. Okay, yeah. because you are issuing a fraudulent document and you're intimidating somebody. So the thing that we, the, the issue was not the bailiff. The issue was talking to the statutory police who was scratching his head. And I said, I, I'm, I am, I'm here to assist you, but I, I, you know, I brought you in. It was us that brought the statutory police in, and we said, I want you to arrest these bailiffs. And and, and the, the guy, <laughs> the young statutory police officer, so he's on the phone to all his superiors, had absolutely no idea what yeah. uh, what, what what this was all about. You see, so it's just a matter of educating them over over time. You haven't got to fall out with them, okay? Yes. This, this, this is where um, this is common sense, Andrew. If there's if there's uh, three common law constables on the whole island of Cyprus, you don't go throwing your weight about. Right? Yeah. If there's three thousand common law constables and uh, and there's three statutory police trying to shut the cafe down, and ten of us turn up with this badge on, right? We we don't get aggressive with them, but it's, we just turn up. The very yeah. fact that we've turned up outnumbering them three to one sends yeah. a very strong psychological message that we are the people we have the authority and, yes. and that's the only way we're going yes. to win our country back and that's and what I, absolutely what i love about this is that's what i used i was thinking we need to be organized we need and i love that you guys also have a, a, a uniform and that's the point of the uniform. It's not just because we want to wear uniforms and things like this. It's because it shows organization that we are organized and it is serious and we're taking this serious and it is lawful what we're doing. And then they will take us serious. But yeah. if we keep being in different groups, knowing that you can, you know, have your rights as a, you know, as a free living man and living woman. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, but then you're scattered on that side. You're with that group and you have on Telegram group here and everyone's different places. We do believe the same thing in the sense we're free and the statutory police and the government is doing the wrong thing, uh, but we're scattered. But this can bring us together in one sense because you've already taken initiative to create ID cards, constable ID cards, even normal ID cards, like I said, passports. But even with the constable uh, side of things, you got the uniform going as well and so on. It'll grow from there. You know, in time, if money's coming in, there could be a building, just like the police have a building. We can have constable building where there's offices and people can take phone calls and things like this, but it needs time for the things to grow. And that's what I like about commonlawcourt.com. They've mm -hmm. taken initiative there and they're here for the people. So, and, and we're here to, uh, you, everyone can have this in their own nation. So if you're watching from Australia, because I have a lot of friends from Australia as well, that can happen in your country. Maybe it's already, uh, some mm -hmm. people already alert uh, and aware of this, but it, you, I like what you said there. You made them aware. And that's one thing that I've spoken to you before about. And you told me, that once you do the constable training and there's people that are past the constable training and they're officially constable constables under common law, um, they we, the right thing to do is to go to the police station and uh, you know make it a, make a bring awareness and say, listen, we're here to assist you. We just want you to know we're around, we're common law court uh, constables. And I love that. So it's nothing hidden, it's not some deceitful thing mm -hmm. trying to hide and you know, act all powerful behind the scenes. It's just really in the open. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, exactly that. Exactly that. And um, I, I could see the guys, the the, the statutes police were warming to us. You know, yeah. but um, and they were completely out of their comfort zone, which was fun. Right yeah. to watch the statutes police because they, they, I was said in, in front of you are two criminals. Now, under normal circumstances, you would arrest criminals, wouldn't you? Yes, but the only reason that you were hesitating is because. You see these uh, bailiffs, and you think they're acting uh, honourably, uh, and but they're not. They're, they're, they are fraudsters. They have a fraudulent document, okay, and they're going to steal goods from these living men and women, which is going to cause significant harm, loss, and injury. And but you're not going to dive in there and arrest them. And I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt, because really 
you don't know who what I'm talking about yet, do you? But you will you will over time. Yeah. And, and, and that's it about building numbers. If you start throwing your weight around, it's going to get yourself a real bad name real quick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and yeah. we're not here to do that. And that's yeah. why the um, the launch of the uh, the common law court uh, currency is important. The croon. You can have a croon account. Now that I know they're going to charge uh, an equivalent for about uh, ten British pounds a month, and immediately people are going to start throwing stones at that. But you can see, like, um, it's like it's like a pie chart, and you can see where uh, out of that ten pounds, so much goes towards CLC education, where we're opening up schools, CLC healthcare, where they're going to be giving free healthcare. And I'm fortunate enough to have I've actually met a couple of doctors in the British uh, National Health Service that are going to come and work in the first healthcare centres under common law court. In, 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 in so that's going to happen all over the world. Yeah. That doctors, nurses, midwives are going to be quitting yeah. their jobs to come and work for the people. That's awesome. and it, so they won't deny people access to uh, what they need just because they haven't been vaccinated. Like, right. like it's been happening. They've been, you know, surgeries have been denied. Serious things have been denied mm -hmm. uh, because people were not vaccinated and things like that, which is crazy. It, it, it's, yeah. all, it, it's all about money. And if you can actually pay for the healthcare centers, if you can pay for everything, whatever, whatever they take away from you, you can replace. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, when somebody comes to intimidate you with the status of police and saying, you've got to have this, you've got to have this mandatory vaccination, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. You just say, look, I'm going to ring the police. And you say, well, we are the police. And you say, well, you're not my police. I'm going to introduce you to the common law police. And yes. if we have our own currency and say, we're going to fine you 10,000 Australian dollars for doing yes. this. They come again. What was that? 10,000 Australian dollars? Oh, yeah, I don't use that. So I, I, don't, I don't know how you're going to fine me in dollars. Yes. when I just don't. You, you, you knock yourself out. Send me yes. those pieces of paper. Okay. And yes. it's just going to work. Okay. We're going to take yes. your car away from you. Your car is the registration plate from the common law court. The, you know, the car is now registered to you. The insurance is, is built in with you. Okay. And yes. you know, so we're, we're pushing these things forward as, as hard, as fast as we can. Yes. Whatever we yes. take away from you, we can replace. Yes. Okay. Even companies, if you want to, you can register your company, your business through common law court as well, everything. So if they try to apply their system on you, you can say, look, I'm not under that system. And yeah. it's, it's lawful what you're saying. That you're not saying anything bad, but it will just take time for them to be educated in this reality because we've been brainwashed and conditioned from the school system, everything, man. Guys, they took over everything so this can work and they've been doing it for years. And it's been successful because many people we say this, we say the word is that they're asleep. It's because they were intentionally put to sleep. Exactly. People don't want to be asleep, you know. So we have to help them. And even when we was talking about the police officers, you know, they were nice guys. They just didn't know exactly. They're not our enemies, guys. None of these people are our enemies. It's very sh a small percentage that even know and are doing this intentionally. Most of them are deceived. In the Bible, it says there's many wolves in sheep's clothing. And I tell people it's because the best wolves are the ones that don't know they're the wolves. That's how you get the best wolf. They're deceived. So they're really passionate about what they think they know and what they think they're doing. They think they're doing the right thing, but they're doing the wrong thing because they were mistrained. So well, we've got to right. be kind and merciful and long-suffering. Yeah, yeah the, 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 you can have fun with it. You know, the, the two bailiffs today, where every time I said criminal, you could see them flinch. Yeah. You know, he said, yeah. you're making this personal. I said, we're not making it personal. You're a criminal. He said, but, he said, but I'm a, the bailiff was saying, but I'm a nice guy. And I yeah. said, prisons are full of nice people, but they're yeah. still criminals. Okay. Yeah. And you're a criminal and you should be in prison because you're defrauding people here today and you're going to steal things from them. And, and it's just, you, you haven't got to fight with them to do these things. You see, yeah. we, we've been overrun and there's been a global takeover. And it's not over. The war's not over by a long shot. And people think, oh, COVID, this and that and the other. And then they start to make us look at Ukraine and Russia. And the next thing they'll look at is something else and something else. Yeah. But the only way we're going to win this is, is, one, we have to actually recognize who we are and stand under common law and reclaim our legal fiction and record our birth certificates. 
That's the first thing we have to do, absolutely have to do. So, Linda, can I just, uh, sorry for interrupting there. Can you just explain what you mean by that? Because I'm going to get into that because we're going to talk to people how they can become or sign up to take part of, uh, you know, constable training. Um, mm. And one of them is to do with the birth certificate. Can you just explain just a little bit about a summary? Why? What, what's the, what are you talking about birth certificates now? What are you talking about fictions? What are you talking about? Oh, okay. For those who don't know. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, the um, when you're born, very quickly, when you're born, your parents go and uh, register um, you. And there's a long going argument about use of the word register because it's actually a legalese word. It means yeah. give loyalty to the king or the monarch. Um, so the moment you're born as a, as a one day old baby, your parents sign you away. They create a birth certificate and a company is fraudulently um, created in your name. Now, and that is a contract now. You are actually, as a one-year-old, one-day-old baby, you are now in contract with the government of the land that you were born into. And that is a fraudulent document because for any contract to be valid, the parties to that contract have to have full disclosure. So your parents may, they may or may not, and the state certainly does know, but you as a one-day-old baby, how could you possibly know that you're entering into a business contract when somebody creates a birth certificate for you? And so, believe, yeah, sorry. So they, they innocently, our parents innocently, signed us over to belong to the system instead of to them. Yes. They, they were deceived into that. They didn't thought it was a birth certificate, but it was actually, for their legalese language, a contract saying, yes, I give you my son or daughter that was just born. They're yours. They belong to you, not yeah, me. And, yeah, and if you don't do this within a certain period of time, the government's going to come and fine you. So they, they straight away, they use intimidation and extortion yes. tactics to, to pressurize you into doing so. But what they do is they, they, they create um, a capital letters um, birth certificate for you. And that, with that, they can actually get that is created a legal fiction. So you were born Andrew, and then it was your the, the surname is what they use to create the fictitious legal entity around you. You 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 are Andrew, very plain and simple. That's who you are. You are Andrew, not Andrew surname. Okay, you are Andrew of that family. Okay, but you are born a living man who's called Andrew. That's yeah. it, okay? But they create the legal fiction, which is your surname and your first name, and put Mr. in front of it, or Master, or Miss, and they create that legal fiction. Now, there's lots and lots of legal, um, people talking about where those birth certificates are stored and, and recorded. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that a fraud was committed upon you when you were born. And when you declare your birth, you are declaring to all and everybody around you that you are aware of that. And you are now declaring that you are a living man or a living woman. And, and people think, oh, I have to go and dig out my birth certificate to do that. No, you don't. That thing that was created is a fraudulent document. That birth certificate is total fraud. You declare your birth anytime you like. okay? And you go to the common law court website to declare that. And, that, and that's how you do it. And once you've declared that you are a living man, then the, the people give you the benefit of the doubt that you have the access, ownership to the legal fiction. And you claim the legal fiction back from the fraudulent government that stole it from you at birth. Okay. Yeah. But what more that we can say about that? But that, that, that's it in a nutshell, Andrew. Yes, yes. So... Yeah. Then, uh, in saying that, um, when what would someone need to do if they want to uh, sign up to get, uh, you know, to, to do constable training in their country? Of course, we're going to do one here in Cyprus, guys, for those watching in Cyprus. And you yeah. can email me on, uh, I'll put this up on Andrew I on radio. Here you go, right there. Andrew I on radio at yahoo.com. If you email me there um, and tell me, hey, I'm in Cyprus and I'm interested. We're getting the numbers together and then we'll find a facility where we can do it at um, if we need to do two places or whatever. But um, we'll, Lyndon's trying to, she's going to see if he can make it here physically so he can train us as well. And uh, I don't know what will happen in your country, guys, um, if someone will be able to come there physically or if we online. But um, 
uh, in saying that, so if you guys want to um, know or you want to be part of the Constable training, just email me and I'll put you part of the list and we'll contact you when we know more and what the date and facility and where it's going to be. Um, but let me just remove that now. But um, uh, when, when, what does someone have to do? So can they just um, go on commonlawcourt.com and then yeah. say, I want to yeah. do it, or is there more process? Sure. It's, 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 it's a simple process. The first is with like first things first is you make sure you've recorded your birth certificate. Now, there are staff at Common Law Court. There have to be staff at Common Law Court to make sure that Donald Duck didn't uh, apply or a robot didn't apply with his birth certificate. So the staff at Common Law Court they actually approve every single birth certificate that is um, that is applied for. And that is done Monday to Friday, nine o'clock to five o'clock UK time. So if you do it at weekends, you might get uh, a bit frustrated that you're waiting till Monday until someone's approved you. Once you then you can log in. It's all for free. Then you log in and you can see a little dashboard and you've got your birth certificate number. The moment you can see that, then you can then go back onto commonlawcourt.com. It's on the deeds tab, deeds. So you click on deeds and you can now reclaim your legal fiction. It's just paint by numbers. Just fill out the forms, click the enter button, sit and wait for 24 hours, log in, and you can see there should be an automatic email come that says, congratulations, your legal fiction has been reclaimed. So now you've got a number, okay? Now, you don't have to do that as a living man or woman. It's entirely up to you, okay? However, if you want to be a constable, you do have to prove to the world that you are a living man and you have reclaimed your legal fiction. So you can only be trained as a constable if you've re if you've re recorded your birth and you've reclaimed your legal fiction. And then there's a little button on this website that says work with us and it says peace service. Um, so click on that and then it will automatically recognize that you've done your birth certificate. It's called a BC and your fictitious name and FM. When you've done those two things, you can then apply to be a constable, fill out the form, upload, um, upload the, the nicest uh, passport style photograph you've got of your face. OK, and um, you'd be surprised what people upload there. OK, your cat or dog is not going to get accepted. <laughs> uh, you know whatever you, you know like passport style so we can see you know neck and yeah. shoulders and that sort of thing and you are allowed to smile on that photo okay and uh, and then uh, once that goes in a human being does re uh, look at your application clicks approve and then you can see all the training sessions that are available if there's one in uh, cyprus like like you said andrew yes i am trying to get there um by hook or by crook I will, you know, if you see me in a little rowboat somewhere south of Paphos, just <laughs> end up smoke signals and that's me. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. And, um, and, I, and I've officially made it. The constable course is uh, is simple. It's nothing like the statutory where they have to do months and months and, you know, how to do all these different silly laws. The common law is much more simplistic um, and it's a two day course. It's great fun. And uh, at the end of the two days, um, because you've applied, you should get your warrant card and you, you then you can apply for your uniform. OK, I ought to yeah. say, Andrew, that there are uh, lots and lots that, that it, it, real good education that is it, to, to take you through the constable training. Anybody can become a constable. Anybody that loves freedom, that wants, you know, not like me, I, I just with bringing the police in today and tackling bailiffs and things like that. You don't have to do that. You do not have to do that. If, if you know, if you're a constable, you don't go out on your own ever. You're always out there in pairs. There's a structure, there's a supervisor, there's an area supervisor, regional supervisor and commissioners. So it's all there. It's all there to make sure that you're okay and we'll never ever throw you in the deep end. The worst that could possibly happen to somebody who's brand new is just to Stand, stand. You know, as a group of ten of you outside a cafe that's having a bit of trouble with a, some silly vaccine mandate or something like that. Um, and, and we do role plays through the whole, through the whole two-day training. So, so when people come out of it, I think they'll be, you know, really happy that they made that step because yeah. you know it's so important that we outnumber them. We 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 have to do this. It's not a it's not a quick fix, right? 
Uh, I don't know how many statutory police there are in Cyprus, but we, we, we need, you know, half of them are probably pushing pens, right? But, you know, so if you say there's uh, 5,000, 10,000 statutory police, right, then we, we need at least two or 3,000 common law constables in Cyprus to make a difference, okay? Yeah. And yes. when we stop using we stop using their money, yeah, we 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 put our country back. Yeah, okay? and we can protect our children and the things they're trying to do. They're trying to take to court. I uh, even friends of mine that are, are wanting to take their children from the school because even in UK they were kids were coming back from school and they were vaccinated because uh, they mm -hmm. had a day where they had someone come in from the government. And uh, or Department of Education or whatever, I started talking about how great it is to get vaccinated, and the kids said yes. Primary school kids, then they vaccinated the the children and they went home vaccinated uh, against their parents' consent. So oh. things like this would be stopped. We can protect the kids uh, yeah. from this kind of stuff. We can protect people that want to homeschool their children for now because they, they don't trust the public school system under this system. Um, yeah. And things like this yeah so it's not just about us guys and, and of course and uh, wanting to do the constable training if you're that kind of person you wouldn't probably want to do it because of you anyway you you want to make a difference so it's really great um yeah. to get involved in this guys if you want to um well, so our education systems in the in the toilets anyway right yes. from, from what, what what they're what they're teaching children i'm sure it's the same in cyprus as the uk really and we have, we have a, a lovely body in this country called the social services i don't know what they call themselves in uh, in cyprus right yeah. but they're called social services here ss and they're ss for a reason okay and and uh and so they they do they do dreadful things we we've actually um been very organized in the uk we've been serving notices on all the all the head teachers for personal liability which has made the the vaccination centers move away from the schools okay but that is 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 coercion and coercion is i mean cyprus is based on 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 uh, the british laws anyway that is my understanding of that so so that is coercion in any in any anybody's law book uh, what they're doing to the children there so the yeah. first thing we can do is is home educate. The next thing is is to actually start looking at building our own schools, and yeah. a percentage of the money that's raised on the on the Croon account, where people yeah. can start using their own money. Yes. And, um, you know, so when, when we start doing that, we go towards education as well. So, so yeah. if we don't start doing this now, uh, mm -hmm. the, the the people that started this, uh, they're not going to give up. Right. No, um, and, no, no so, they're going for it. even this false hope where them where the restrictions have gone down. It's just a false hope. It's like the second wave will come, economic collapse. They're having their plans as well. So yeah, it's uh, things are moving for them. <laughs> you know, yeah, and so much more. Yeah. There's a number of things they can do. I mean, this Russia-Ukraine thing that, that's very handy. Okay, for them. Uh, I'm not saying that this yeah. is not terrible. That people are not dying in in Ukraine. Of course. Yeah. I'm not saying that at all. I, I used to live and work in the Ukraine. I've got a lot of sympathy with them. Um, yeah. and I, so the, um, but this ju it's, it's just completely stage managed. The entire event is a stage managed event. Um, now, what you could guess um, that if you, you understand there's something called Event 201, which was sponsored by Bill Gates five months before COVID was invented, and almost exactly what happened um, in COVID was role played in event 201 almost exactly it's quite scary what happened there yes. um, more worrying today is something called cyber polygon where they it was like um, um, an internet virus internet shutdown and who's who's chief suspect to um, to have a knee-jerk reaction to a, a cyber attack would be Russia of course so they make uh, Putin the pantomime villain and uh, so if then the cabal, they then release um, some kind of internet virus and start shutting things down, which they can't shut down the whole world because, you know, I know that for a fact, being a, a blockchain architect, it's, it's just not happening. They shoot themselves in the foot doing that. But they would get massive, massive disruption by doing so. And the end game of that is that... Um, Andrew, you and I, we just we we're, we're not trusted now because there's uh, there's uh, terrorists out there who are accessing the internet and and, and so 
everybody that accesses the internet now has to have a login password even if you just log in onto google right you would then have to log in with your password and username so they can know every single thing you do and see yeah. on the internet. now they can censor everything um yeah. that that could be a, a, a possible spin-off from uh, russia ukraine a cyber attack yeah spin-off and of course the um uh, collapsing the the gas supplies well the other one they're going to do is, is stick something nasty in in some people's vaccines like the marburg virus uh and then people start you know bleeding from the eyes you know you yeah. can imagine if there's 50 people bleeding from the eyes in cyprus how quickly they'd lock you down again yes, right? yes. so, so that all, all there's, a, there's a number of things they could do right yeah and, and, and will do uh, yeah. but we've got uh, we've got to get up and start yeah we, we you know we have got time to, to break through this yeah and if we train enough constables up um and you guys listening to this if you, if you think you can be a constable and i can say it again anybody can become a constable okay so if yeah. you want to come along and be a constable and you help us run the constable event then you can become an authorized trainer of constables as well and then you can yourself you can start recruiting and training constables because yeah. we, we need people to come in and take that leadership role and start yeah. pushing this out to the people so we all get used yeah. to each other sorry andrea yeah, sorry, mate. Let me ask you some questions on that then. Um, does everybody, no, no matter who it is, if they signed up to become a constable and they do the training, does everyone pass even if they got a bad attitude or, uh, yeah. you know, do we, you know, do you like look through and go, wait a minute, man, this guy is like, he'll probably beat someone up. This guy's not going to represent constables yeah. and common law court. Do you fail some people or do they all, everyone pass? I, 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 I... <laughs> I get an occasional phone call from the guys saying, would you like to look at this photograph? <laughs> yeah. And I think, okay, okay, mustn't prejudge. Okay, so, so we, you know, it, there are some strange people that want to become constables uh, and there are some people that turn up who are just simply not right for it, okay? Yeah. And there are people that have become constables that have, uh, that have gone out and done silly things afterwards, okay? Yeah. Um, and, and, and we had to kick them out. But it's pretty serious stuff, okay? Um, you know, it, it, most people, nine, not 19 out of 20, 99 out of 100 people that apply to become a constable will be accepted. And yeah. those people attend the course, bearing in mind you're just there to, to be a representative of the people, we the people. Will you, so most people will, be, will pass the course and become constables, okay? Okay. Um, all right. So there is a uh, you do filter it and you do look into things. And if you find out someone started acting in a way that doesn't represent common law, or is giving a bad name or tainting common law constables, then they removed or yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So since we started we we I think we've re we've removed about three people. Okay. The, the, all right. Awesome. Yeah, have been fired. It's great. This destruction is taken serious and. Not, not everyone's just allowed to go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. And so how long How long is the training? Two days. Two so days two, training. Two days, yeah. We tend to do it on a Saturday and Sunday so people can get time off work for things like that. So nine okay. to five kind of thing? Yeah, it's about half past nine to about four o'clock in the afternoon. And there's there's lots and lots of breaks. There's videos in the middle. There's yeah. role plays in the middle. So it, 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 it goes really, really fast. Okay. So it was actually put together by... Um, a former uh, detective, a regional crime squad detective in the, in the British police force. Um, okay. And he was the guy that put it all together, the constable training. And, um, and then I, I, I helped him uh, a number of occasions with that. Uh, and then he gave me the, the slides. Uh, and so we're now putting that into a real flowing format. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a work in progress all the time. Okay, so excellent. Good. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. Um, also, uh, one question, uh, guys. You can share questions if you want. Post your questions, um, uh, and when, like I said, if they're valid for what we're talking about, I'll share them as well. And ask Lyndon. But another question was, how much do you need to know about common law? Here, I'll show you 
about common law to be a constable? So how much okay. do you need to know from beforehand about common law to be a constable? Okay, well, I'm doing a training uh, second, second, third of April. It's the next one I'm doing. And uh, a, a guy I know really well, um, and I said, you know what? You, you're just perfect, absolutely perfect. You, you could not, you'd sail it and you'd be, you'd be an authorized trainer. I know you would. And he said to me, I don't see my girlfriend very often. Uh, and that is the weekend I'm seeing it, okay? Uh, and she doesn't know anything about what we're doing in common law. She doesn't know anything about common law. Can she be a constable? Can she come along? And I said, absolutely. You don't need to know anything about common law because we assume that the constables coming are just people who have done their birth certificate and fictitious names. So they've got that little bit of understanding about common law. Right? They have to know that. Uh, but the rest of it, no because there's there's a lot of information that just isn't relevant so we cover that on the training and, and in fact one specific um, set of slides that we show people is the absolute basics of common law okay and then i get into uh, another presentation there that's just been recorded actually um it's a recording of me so i can't be everywhere doing it so on that i talk about different types of common law and common law purists, as I call them, who will argue till the cows come home about the fact that common law court must not use the word register on their website. OK, uh, and I, I always say to them, I say, please, it's an academic argument. Can we have the, the enemy are on the beach? They're coming for our children. Right? It's a dead, deadly, deadly serious what we're doing. Right. Uh, can we have this conversation? after the war's won okay um, and i will sit and talk to different people about all different types of common law all day okay yes. and i've lived through this andrew where people have thrown stones at common law court saying one thing and another um and it's to me andrew it's just an indication that common law court is is right over the target to, yeah. to get so much flack okay so yeah so basically for those people that are it's genuine people as well but they you know you sometimes you um, we have to put the, the priorities straight. And secondly, just because their legalese dictionary says that register means this, it doesn't mean that us as living men have to surrender to that when we're talking to each other. So you've no. got to be careful where, where people are saying, oh, I, I don't want to say good morning anymore because morning means you're mourning for the dead because you're dead. No, man, when I'm speaking, I'm speaking as a living man. And when I say good morning, it means the sun is rising. It's, it's, it's morning uh, to the new day and it's good. You know, so <laughs> you don't have to submit to what they have put on over us as if we're still their slaves. And that is every time we say the word understanding, oh, I can't say the word understand anymore. No, I can because I'm just talking to you. And if I'm talking yeah. to a police officer that belongs to the system or a judge or something, then I know what I what they will take it as and when they say what it means. So then I'm careful. So I know when to switch to each thing. But don't get so overcome and so... Uh, so strict about it, so uh, full on about it that you don't realize that, hey, we're not under their system. You're mm. a free living man and you choose what dictionary you're speaking from. So that's basically what you're trying to say about the register thing. Exactly. Well, it, yeah? It's in the presentations as well. One of the part of the presentation for constable training is where on earth did common law come from? Where did it get its authority from? You know, where, where, where are we 100 percent safe? You know, you mentioned earlier, are we going to get arrested for this? Nobody's any good to anybody if they're stuck in a jail cell, Andrew. Right? Yeah. That's not our intention. Okay. Our intention is freedom. Okay. And, and, and get away from this tyranny. So, so I, I'll stand with that all day long, all day. Okay. Another question we have now, another great one. Dai is going for it. Excellent questions. Is there an age limit to be a constable? There's a lower age limit of 18. That's just out of pure common sense, right? So technically, yeah. technically, there is no lower age limit, okay? I've had people in trainings come with their parents, like 16-year-olds, to, to look in, right? But really, for their own protection, um, we make sure that they're 18 at least. Upper age limit, there is no age limit. Okay, great. Another question we have is, uh, uh, here we go. Does the training cover scenarios where force could be required or just a law legal? That's a great question. Yeah, it, it, it focuses on, on 
making sure that we're staying the right side of the law and avoiding force at all times okay so i, I was in a situation today where force could have easily been escalated to the idea and all the time is is to avoid that at all costs okay there's there's a yeah. phrase you can take someone to hell and back and they'll thank you for the trip if only you use the right words okay okay so, so that's what that's what we do and and that's why when you're engaging as a constable if you're a junior constable or not a very experienced constable you shouldn't be engaging with them anyway right it should be the supervisors and above that are engaging with anybody okay so what we need is body of numbers okay so if, if there's 10 of you stood behind as common law constables and you're all brand new and, you, and your uniform hasn't even been through the washing machine yet right then um, fine stand there and, and just look look the part okay and, and let the person the supervisor do the talking force avoid it at all costs okay but let me give you a scenario, a scenario that happened in australia they were not allowed to go past five kilometers from the houses but there was this uh, couple um mm. they were drinking coffee so they, they were allowed to take the mask according to their legal restriction rules yeah. unlawful rules they were allowed to take their mask down when they're drinking something or eating and sitting down because if they stand up COVID gets really dangerous but when you're sitting down it doesn't it knows what they're yeah. doing yeah. but anyway yeah. but when they were sitting down drinking coffee and so the one of the officers started talking to them and then literally pins the woman down starts uh and he's uh, the, the boyfriend's yelling but we, we live here she's not doing anything wrong we just went came for a walk here at the park and so let's say they pin someone down pepper spraying them and uh you know the boyfriend calls constables mm. to come they're literally using force and beating up and torturing this person that did nothing wrong mm. is living man and woman what sure. can we do sure. there when they're actually holding them down binding them sitting on them knee on, knees on them what would you do it's the numbers game again andrew okay it's, it's a numbers game okay if, if there's three three statutory police officers pinning them down and one of you what are you going to do what, yeah. what are you what are you going to do that isn't going to escalate the situation worse right what you can do is put yourself between the statutory police and and the living man or woman that you're trying to protect and start saying very firmly and calmly right I, I want you to back off. I want you to stand down. Stand down. Statutory police, stand down. Let us talk. Put your pepper spray away. Put your taser away. Holster your weapon. Okay? Stand and talk to me. Come over here and talk to me. Okay? Um, and that, that would be the situation. Yeah. Three, four, okay. five years' time when we outnumber them 10 to 1, right? If, any, yeah, if, yeah. if there is any statutory police left yet, we want to recruit the statutory police, right? Yeah, and that's yeah, because many of them wanted to do the right thing and they just got caught up into this system. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, they, and they'll stay there because their wages and their job. But if we can pay them equivalent wages and better conditions yeah. and actually doing the side of good, then they'll they'll come over in droves. We don't want to make enemies of them. We want to actually educate them and and, and, yes. and talk to them in, in, in that way. Ten to one. I mean, that, that's never going to happen anyway in the future, right? But if it is, then then we can then arrest them for a breach of the peace, and we can actually take them to our own stations and process them from there. And again, that is the that is the journey that we're on, right? Is, yes. is to actually have our own police stations, the whole thing, and that's why I've actually seen this in the UK, uh, which is fantastic. Okay, that wow. we've actually, that we, we've got a lot of things happening here um, that, that are you know coming together very nicely. And there's no reason yeah. we can't have it anywhere in the world. You know, so, uh, guys, I just want to yeah. to emphasize something. If you see, remember what he just said, they have the a police station there. There's going to be buildings. There're going to be courtrooms that we're going to have. There's many different things that are going to be done. If any of this was uh, unlawful, the <laughs> They would have been arrested by now. The building would have been shut down. There would not be a you know a common law police building, so it's not unlawful. Okay, so just some this is some of the evidence of that it's not unlawful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and, and today was, I was ringing the statutory police to come and assess me. Right? Yeah, and 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 when I, when I got absolutely no problem getting my warrant card out, and I got not absolutely no problem getting out documentation from the people. 
Right? That's what we said early on. It is the people. The people put the government in. The government put the police in. The authority is with the people. It's not the other way around. Okay? And it's we, the people. Yeah. There isn't a judge and in the world that goes against a jury of 12 people. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. So with the common law, it's a jury of 12 people, and it's the people bringing judgment on the situation when they hear it out with evidence and witnesses. And he brings in the actual individual that did the, the wrong. So if it's a police officer, he doesn't come in under his banner and under his title. If he's the one who was bullying somebody, unlawfully hurting them, and they didn't do anything wrong, um, like the, when they arrested a pregnant woman for posting something on Facebook in Australia. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so that police officer that did it, that played a part in that, can be taken to common law court with the evidence, with the witnesses, and they were persecuted as in, an individual. Is that correct? Absolutely. In, Absolutely. And yeah. even their police chief who gave the command to go, anyone that had played any part of it, right? Yeah, so they can't hide behind their titles or yeah. their, you know, or anything else. That's amazing. That We're talking about judges can be taken uh, to common law court, Absolutely. everyone, and even the president. So, yeah. yeah. You see, with, with, with all that, I, I'll, I'll temper that, Andrew, because we have to we have to walk into this with, with our eyes wide open all the time. Right, and recognize that right now there is not one single common law constable in the island of Cyprus. Okay, and when there's 10 of you, right, then you know you move around, uh, there are 10 of you. Okay, when there are 3,000 of you, okay, and in the UK we have something called the lifeboats. I don't know if you have it in Cyprus where if someone's you know stuck out at sea, we have the lifeboats that are privately run. And everyone carries around a little ca a little phone, and it goes beep beep, and and then they they run off to the lifeboat station, and off they go. It'll be the same with the common law constables. You go about your life, you go about your job, you go about your everyday living, and if there is an attendance event, I'm not talking. We're not going to go out and get cats out of trees for people, right? What we what we're going to be doing is going out to certain events that that are a real breach of the peace, that are a breach of people's uh, rights. To, to be free from harm, loss, and injury, right? But then we have to look how many constables have we got to be able to attend that event. So we have to live in in reality, the reality of today. Yeah. What can we achieve today? Okay, yeah. and, and and just yeah. live with that. Okay. Yeah, be wise each step. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Okay. So once, uh, just to we'll finish it up in a few minutes now. Um, but at, let's say when, when someone finishes the, their uh, constable training, what do you get? Do you get uh, a gun, a badge, you know, taser, hat? What, how, what, what does, what does uh, you know, just throwing the questions out there. So what can you talk about that? Like? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uzi. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, people want to know. So... Well, what is it that they get? And you know, yeah, we're, yeah, we're hideously outnumbered. So what we're going to give you is three assault rifles each, right? <laughs> armored yeah, car. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. No, when the the reason that you put your photograph on your application is so that we uh, we close down each event uh, a few days before to make sure that the warrant cards can be delivered to the authorized trainer before the event. So we have a pass out parade, a ceremony at the end. Okay, where we say congratulations, there's no idiots in the room, um, you've all passed, and then you take an oath, okay, to uphold the protection of the people, um, and then you are then sworn in as a common law constable and handed over your warrant card. Now, because this is all voluntary, it's not funded at the moment, we, you know, that's what we're aiming to do. We're aiming to have everything you see fully funded, including cars, so we have our own um, constable cars driving around the whole thing. That's not today, right? So now everything is, you have to buy your own uniform, okay? Um, and all the prices are in uh, the new common law court currency coin called the Kroon. And the reason it's in the Kroon is because it can't be shut down, because the, uh, the government's um, shut down every single bank account that anything went near common law court um and that was another indication that they're really bang on track um to you know that they're doing something right so we made the step 
um, to actually move over into the world of the blockchain, uh, totally, utterly independent of all banks, all processors, blockchain. And it's the fastest blockchain in the world, transacts four times faster than Visa and MasterCard, and it can use its own currency, it can use any currency. And one of the use cases is the croon. So you can buy your uniform with the croon, uh, if you've not been, uh, you know, just go off to go off to Coinbase or wherever it is you buy your Bitcoin from, uh, and from there you'll be able to swap it into into Croon probably sometime, sometime in the next seven days you'll be able to do that. So that's a great time to see this uh, presentation because once you've done the training, you can get your uniform in British pounds. I added it up; uh, it's about 150 to 160 pounds. And you've got um, a baseball cap, which looks great. You've got um, a nice, hot, sunny Cyprus. You've got a, a great polo shirt. And then you've got for colder nights, there's a, a fleece uh, fleece with this on uh, and, and, and this raincoat. We're looking at a, a white high-vis jacket with the constable on the back. Um, you get your warrant card. You get your, um, your official document that you are a constable. Um, is there uh, boots? Uh, trousers. There are trousers. Boots, no. Uh, in fact, today, when when the situation um, de-escalated with the bailiffs uh, that I was protecting against today, um, I was having a laugh and a joke with the police, the strategy police, uh, looking at all their feet. And I'm saying, you're all wearing different boots. And um, I said, don't the police give you boots? And believe it or not, the United Kingdom police do not issue uh, their own police force with their own boots. They're all, I was surprised that all of them had gone out and bought their own boots. So we're, we're having, you know, okay. conversations about so we're competing boots. with them. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Let me ask you something about the, the crew, though. If people don't know anything about, you know, um, blockchain and cryptocurrency and things like this, because it, it'll take time for people to transition to that. Can they still... Would you be good with you know people still being able to uh, you know purchase the uniform when they have the money with their normal money that they trade with for now until they get to that place where they yeah. move to that? Unfortunately, not Andrew, because the moment the moment common law court breathes in the fiat world, they get shut down. Right. The, the, so when they go into their system, they get shut down. I heard that happened to John Smith as well in his accounts. Yeah. Yeah, as well. Absolutely, yes. absolutely yeah. everything. The, the moment but, they, they yeah. move anything, right, even birth certificates, they were just shutting down the bank accounts left, okay, right. Okay, they were now. trying to stop them from raising up. Okay, yeah, but yeah. that's all. Not in, in really saying that, guys, hmm. I want to add that you know it's not just about common law. People are getting their accounts shut down because they're not vaccinated, man. You know, it is crazy what's going on and how far they're going to go. I don't know. So it's not just about getting part of common law. They're just hitting people with different things because when you belong to their system they will they control you and they can remove and take away that's why they can take your kids from you as well because they belong to the state you signed them over when you had kids with the birth certificate uh same with your car when you register your car to them you 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 don't own your car it belongs to them you literally signed over a registration saying no i'm just using it it belongs to you that's why they can impound your car uh, yeah. many things that we don't know they play with us we don't understand what they're doing to us but they, they, with deceptive language, like I said before, they double tongue like a snake, like a serpent. Uh, yeah. they, they change the, the, the dictionary. They, how, how, how was that even allowed for them to actually invent a dictionary that flips the word to many times mean the complete opposite to what we were taught it means? This completely deceptive, completely evil. And it was allowed to happen and still allowed. So what's happening? That system is allowing it because the system is evil. It's run by these globalists, which are very much cult and very satanic in their worship and everything it's very spiritual as well we'll get into that another day i'm going to make a video about the spiritual side yeah um but Absolutely. with the can you show us your id man can you show us your not id your uh, constable uh car just put it there so, so people can see it yeah, this sure. is the card so yeah. this is what we would get if you do the constable training you'll get this kind of a id card showing that you're a common law constable to yeah. verify yourself if uh, anyone else tries to talk to you yeah, uh, or try to come against you. Yeah, yeah, and and the moment you start with, with the croon, by the way, if you if you're a computer dinosaur, I just get a teenager to help you out because it's like the first time you use internet banking, you think you're going to wake up tomorrow and there's going to be no money in your bank because you bought something, and 
it's really a lot simpler than you think. Um, we, we do have these things, which is the uh, the common law currency yeah, yeah. card and, and, and an app. And it's a lot simpler than you think. Yeah, you, it's very you well put together, on, everything. Yeah. You touched on a couple of things, Andrew, but just to sort of start to wrap up. Yeah, Guys, yeah. we all know about the Canadian truckers, right? Yeah, And we all know that the Canadian government shut down all the bank accounts and everybody, yeah. and they went after it. They really went after those people. So if that doesn't yes. raise a red flag in your life, yes, if, if we don't start using our own currency, they will shut you down. They will stop you from doing anything. That's why we don't have electric cars. Electric cars are just vehicles for the cabal to stop you driving out of your town if you haven't been a good boy or girl. They will yeah. shut your bank account down without even blinking. They're doing it right now. They try yeah. to remove your children from you. They're doing it right now. The only thing you're going to do to protect yourself is stop using their money, stand under common law, and have enough constables surrounding you to protect you against this. So we, we, we're, 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 we're running against time here, folks. And, um, you know, the, 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 we can agree to disagree on a lot of points, right? But one thing we must not disagree on is that we are facing a global takeover this isn't over by a long shot uh, and, we, and we have to start training constables at a hundred miles an hour yeah it's true man uh like just to finish off then like last few questions that i have if you guys have a question do it quickly because i will uh you know he's got things to do i got also to go to my and do my things as well to my son as well but anyway um the with the the, so we have an ID card, constable card, to show to verify who you are that you belong to as a constable to the court, to the common law. Uh, also, there's a uniform, like you said. The uniform you said is about 160 pound equivalent, yeah. uh, English yeah. pound. The and the training is about how much for That's the two days training? How much is it? Okay, okay, depends depends on where we're going. If 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 you hire out the local village hall for 150 pounds, that has to be paid for. And we do actually pay the authorised trainers to do so, although we're actually changing that a little bit. If they want to waiver their fee, they can. Um, so we charge the equivalent of 25 British pounds. It will be converted to croon next week, so 25 pounds. And what happens is if you have 20 people at 25 pounds and there's an overspill of money, much more than the event costs, then as we shut the event down, any money that's over is divided amongst the people that attend, and that is credited towards the cost of their uniform. Okay, okay that's great. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a lot of the money as well that people pay for, um, just even like for the passport, because you, there's a passport as well available, a common law passport. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the money goes back into, like you said, infrastructure to build hospitals later, or you know, health centres and different things like that create get building so you know, the system is really growing and has facilities in every state and series yeah. yeah. Andrew, yeah. I, I was speaking to i was speaking to a doctor the other day who's, who's coming to work in in the um in the headquarters in in uh, dundee scotland and that's a a, a local doctor just about uh, a gp but that we need to pay that person yeah right? that, that individual that individual needs to be paid okay yeah and uh, so you know we, we we can't live on apples and oranges i'm afraid right. yeah. so so this that we have to look at this uh, as a as a working entity to make it work but uh, it's a very very yeah. simple very simple way of doing this is stop using their money one put yourself yeah. under common law and have enough physical muscle around you in the constables to make sure that you are forever protected uh, yeah. and and we win our country by doing that and in time, there will be also uh, cameras like they have, so everything's recorded. So they're more afraid uh, because they can't do anything that's hidden. They can, we can, uh, and also there will be uh, like, what do we have? Like walkie talkies, you know? Um, <laughs> we just we can get them later. Right? Walkie talkies are being looked into, um, but most people have smartphones that do more than more than anything can do these days. So people carry their yeah. own smartphones. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yeah. But, but a camera, uh, the camera kit uh, has, has been sourced already, um, and just there's there's actually two camera kits that you can actually wear on you, and and the one that I prefer has got a GPS locator on it as well. Right. So is that part of the the hundred and sixty pound? No. 
Or yeah, is that but extra? That, but, that, but, that, but that's not a great. Actually, 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 uh, you have to forgive me for that because I was adding up on the fingers and toes doing that. I think it might be very close. But the actual camera kit with the GPS locator was only about thirty-five pounds anyway. So okay. It's not, not a great deal of money, Andrew. Those things. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. Because for now, people have to pay their way because it's still the system is still in, getting built up. Yeah, yeah. And there's so admins I, I, sitting in I, offices I, I, and stuff. I, I, yeah. I find with my smartphone and recording things on my smart. The moment you start recording things on your smartphone, that shuts them all up. Yeah. Right. Okay. They, they, and they, you would recommend that, right? On the train, like oh, when you're yeah. a constable, always record. Yeah. Film everything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Film everything. Yeah. All right. Um, also, just to let you guys know, with the crew, um, the the say it again. Crew. Yeah. Crew. It's, it's, with it's, the crew. Yeah. Together. Yeah. Together. It means together. Okay. Great. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, it's backed up by. Precious metals, I heard as well. It's silver, gold, platinum. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. It's, back, it's backed up primarily by gold and, and precious metals and other tangible assets. They're looking at backing it up with property as well. Okay, wow. so so they're, they're, that's excellent. That's very far from how the banks are working with printing money from thin air. Oh, it, it, just just a different world, Andrew. Okay, yeah. completely. Guys, just so you know about your the money, right? The, the notes that we carry on paper. Your 10 cent or 5 cent or 1 cent coin is worth more than that printed paper. It's just printed paper. Just remember mm. that, okay? Yeah. So precious sure. metals is great to be backed up with. So, mm. okay. I think we're good. Or one last question was, uh, do you have a date in mind for us in Cyprus here um, that you're, you kind of will be coming if you make it? Absolutely. Um, I can't do anything until 2nd and 3rd of April because we've completely redone the constable training and that will be the first outing in the HQ in Dundee, Scotland. Um, after that, I'm good to go. Um, okay, um, so around uh, April? Anytime in April, yeah. And um, I, I don't need any... I mean, before somebody invented COVID, I, 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 I've got an office in Cyprus. Um, so yeah, I, I was there all the time. Um, yeah. And you know, but I, I refuse to to go through their stupid measures. Okay, um, but uh, if I can find a way there, and I can get there. I will be there. Okay, uh, if, if if not, if if you're looking at the worst case scenario, Andrew, if not, then I I can train people up. It does not work as well on Zoom. Okay, because we have to do role plays. The absolute best way is is to get somebody in who's an authorized trainer. Uh, and I can come in and, and, and train you. So I have uh, I have a very serious uh, intention uh, to come to Cyprus to do it, and it will be in, in April or the first couple of weeks in May. Okay, awesome. All right, you'll keep us uh, posted with the exact date. But that you guys got it. Uh, it's April or May, early May. So uh, he's really trying hard to be able to come down. And so I'll keep you posted. And... Um, also, like I told you guys, there's a commonlawcourt.com. Go there that you can claim back your fictitious name and declare yourself alive and not lost at sea. That's what they, they said that they did to us. Um, and re and re-get your birth certificate. And birth means what we think it means. Okay, <laughs> not what the legalese dictionary says it means. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so yeah, don't don't get caught up in all that as well. Um but yeah, so there's that. And also, if you're in Cyprus and you do want to take part of the common law constable training, it's going to happen in Cyprus in April or May. Here's my email again. I'll put it there right now. Write it down and uh, email me if you're in Cyprus and saying, listen, I want to be part of it. Put me down. And then we'll let you know when uh, it's going to be on. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Other than that, go to the lookintoit.com website. There's a section where it talks about COVID. There's another section where it, it goes, how deep does a rabbit hole go? And it talk, it has more videos about common law and about everything else, what they've done to us and what they're doing. And uh, so just to get you more informed, more waking up and more, you can share these videos. Plus on my Rumble channel, you will find Lyndon's. He done amazing uh, videos. I think it was 18 of them. Um, just awesome. I loved looking through them, guys. Try and watch them on uh, from one to eighteen. Don't skip because you saw the title and you like it. Just try to watch them from one to eighteen. He really put them together so you can uh, take you somewhere with that. 
um, and so much information about all the stuff and the agenda that's been going on. So, so well made. Lots of footage from different places. You put them all together. I loved it. So go check it out, guys, as well. Okay. And um, yeah. I think that's it. Do you want to say anything else before I close up? No, uh, guys, I, I, like I said, I've got a vested interest in, in getting snipers back. Okay. Um, like I said, if, if you guys listen to this, you want to be trained up constables in Cyprus, then great. Okay. Um, and I'll see you there as just as quick as I can get there and help you out. Okay. And any, anyone listening around the world, look, guys, this, that we, we will, we will win this. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you know okay. They can't, they cannot defeat us. They won't. Right, we're absolutely, you know, in our own minds, we've already got it done. But I, I'm a very practical guy, and to me, it's like this: the three wings of independence are what we need. Okay, yeah. Andrew, thanks. Thank you for thank you for allowing me yeah. this. Platform. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you, mate. Thank you. All right, we'll, we'll say goodbye here, and uh, we'll talk again, Lyndon, soon. Okay, thanks, thank guys. you, mate. Bye bye. See you guys. Bye. See you, everyone. Bye bye.